All right, so this information is pretty, uh, pretty public knowledge. You can get it off the uh, Fair Isaacs website. Uh, but this is the ratio of uh, items that make up your, your uh, credit score. The first one is 35%, is, uh, which is 35% is your payment history. Your payment history is actually made up of um, the types of accounts that you're making payment on, uh, the presence of anything negative on there, uh, the dollar amount of anything negative on there, um, the number of, of negative items and the n number of positive items that you've been making accurate payment, uh, payments on. 30% uh, of, of the credit criteria is made up of the amount that's owed. Now that could be um, the dollar amount owed, the percentage, the debt ratio, uh, the amount of credit extended to you, the number of credit cards, that type of thing. Length of credit history is how far your history goes back, uh, the, the length of time since you had anything uh, negative happen. 10% uh, of it comes to, it comes to your new credit. That's the amount of inquiries that you've had, the types of new accounts that have been opened and how, how recently they've been opened, uh, the, and the number of new open accounts. And then you have 10% uh, is types of credit used. That's the ratio of credit cards to loans, uh, the mix of the credit that you have available to you. So all these things together make up 100% make up your, your, your FICO score. All right, this is what's commonly known. What's not so commonly known is that FICO has 16 different scorecards. Which scorecard you fall on depends on the most relevant uh, event in your, most re in your recent credit history. So for instance, you might fall on a bankruptcy scorecard if you recently filed for Chapter 13. If uh, you just started establishing your credit history, you might be on a thin credit file. If uh, you just had your first 30-day late, you might be on a recent lateness card. Okay? Now, not every card goes the, the same range of FICO. FICO generally ranges from 300 to 850. But for instance, if you're on the bankruptcy scorecard, I believe the bankruptcy scorecard only goes from 300 to 836. So um, a lot of loan officers aren't familiar with this, but if you actually look on, the, on the, the credit report that a lender uses, it'll tell you the range that you're in. So not everyone uh, reports to all three bureaus. So what can often happen is, let's say you have a bankruptcy and it's only reporting on the Experian report. Well, Experian might show FICO range 300 to 830 or 836. It, that particular scorecard doesn't go all the way up to the 850. So based on that 300 to 836, the rest of this criteria is used to determine your score for Experian. And obviously that's going to be different for each bureau depending on what's being reported on that particular uh, bureau. This is what we know. Now what is a, a, a theory that we've come up with that seems to be working pretty effectively for us is that we believe that credit scores are based uh, against uh, an average. We believe that they're tracking, let's say, a bankruptcy scorecard, for instance. We're tracking, the, the, the Farragut Corporation is tracking everybody who's uh, recently filed for a, uh, a bankruptcy, who had filed for a bankruptcy in the past. And they keep a close eye on as to what types of criteria will change their, their, uh, their, their payment probability for the good or, or, or for worse, okay? Let me, let me back up a sec. What your FICO score actually uh, is, is a numerical estimate of the probability that you will default on a loan. So the higher the number, the less of a chance that you're going you're gonna to default on a loan. So when they take someone like on a bankruptcy scorecard, let's say the average person in bankruptcy files, when they file for bankruptcy, they include all their accounts into that, into that history. Okay? So that average person might fall between a 550 and a 580. Once they file for bankruptcy, they fall on the bankruptcy scorecard. All their items are included in it. So they might, they might on average, fall between 550 and 580. Okay? If, for instance, I filed for Chapter 13, but you know, I had the presence of mind to hire a credit consultant beforehand, and they advised me to leave a few of these accounts open that had excellent payment histories, they've been open for a long period of time, um, and there's no reason to include them because they have relatively low balances or, or no balances at all. If I file for Chapter 13 now, it's been our experience that if you leave a number of accounts open with good payment histories, you can have a significantly higher credit score even though you're in a Chapter 13. The average person might fall between 550 and 580, but me, since I had three open accounts with $10,000 10, limits, you know, relatively no balance and excellent payment histories, I can conceivably have a 640, 650, 660 credit score even though I just filed for a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. So that's what goes into your credit score.